we once again have Donna with us and I've been working with Donna now for about a month. Originally when I first met Donna, and I hope she doesn't mind my saying this, but she lost a member of her family when she was 15 years old. Her sister was nine when she was ill and died. And this was a number of years back. In the time that I, when I first met her, she said that she had no memories of anything that happened before the age of 15. It's almost like her life wasn't there. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Then, through a series of very short sessions, maybe five or ten minutes each, I introduced her to hypnosis and told her subconscious mind that perhaps not right then, but at some time very shortly, maybe that day, maybe that night, or maybe over the next two or three days, she would begin to have pleasant memories coming to the surface from back before she was 15. And you've had how many since then? Maybe five, five. six? Um, at times she remembers, the, I think the first one was when you saw yourself kneeling. Mm -hmm. Digging to China. <laughs> <laughs> um, as most kids do, and you had a spoon, was it? A big spoon that my mother gave me. And you were how old, do you think? Um, two, three. And small enough where when a child will... You sit on your haunches, is that uh -huh. the way to say it? So you, you, um, you're not kneeling, you're not sitting, but you're just... Your foreleg is here and the back leg is there and you're just squatting. Right, and you were digging. Yeah, digging in the dirt. And do you remember what you were wearing? Yeah, it was a thin dress, and I remember the sun hot on my back, and it felt so good. After that time, you had another one. We were driving one day, and it came back to me, and um, I, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> you were in the back seat? Oh, yes, yeah, so I was in the back seat of the car. And my mother was driving, and I was looking out the window, and I was maybe six or seven, and I had my eyes closed as we were going past the buildings. We were on Grove Street, where we used to live, and there were a lot of people all over, and the sun was shining hot and warm, and I would close my eyes and feel it on my face as we drive. And then I would see all different colors. And I thought that was so neat. And then we would go into areas where it all got dark. And then I thought I was so smart because I knew what was building and what was sunshine then. The tall buildings in Oakland? Mm -hmm. It kept the sun from coming on my face. and So I thought that was pretty smart that I knew. Now you had another one that was, um, you were swinging. Yes, yes. I could see myself with my feet to the, to the sun. Because when you're swimming, s swinging way high, and um, we'd swing so hard that the swing set thing was in a big park, would shake as you go up. And it was so wonderful. And then there was this, I was little, it was a day off from school, and there were dragonflies all over, because it must have been mating season. Of course, at the time, I didn't know that, but I could see the dragonflies all over. What I'm going to do now is take her back again and see what comes to the surface. So Donna, as you're sitting there, we're going to go back in time, but before we do that, I want to help you to relax first, because when you're relaxed, you don't have to l try to remember because that kind of defeats the purpose uh, because then you begin to conjure up conscious thoughts of what you think might have happened. I don't want you to have to try to think about it. Just expect it to be there and it'll be there. So what I'd like you to do now is just let your eyes close with a nice long slow deep breath and let go. 
all the way down to your toes with each breath that you exhale. Let all the tension dissipate. Let it evaporate. Now in a moment I'm going to ask you again to open your eyes and then close your eyes. You're going to find it rather difficult each time I ask you to do this. But when you do, you don't need to focus on and one more time, all the way down to the bottoms of your feet. Now Donna, I can help you to relax even more deeply by picking up your arm, by picking up your left wrist. And I don't want you to help me, nor do I want you to resist me. I'm going to pick it up now. And I'm going to lift it, and I want you to stay perfectly relaxed, and you'll have it. That's perfect. And when I let your arm back down and your hand touches your other hand, your relaxation is going to double once again. Expect it to happen, want it to happen, and let it happen. Perfect relaxation. Now, Donna, in that state of relaxation, I'm going to help you to relax your mind even more. Now, we demonstrated how you could do it with the numbers. Only this time, what I'd like you to do is begin with the last day of the year, December 31st, which obviously is New Year's Eve. I would like you to begin to go back through the month of December, a day at a time or a week at a time, and you don't need to say all of the numbers of the month. Just go back and pick out the special events, maybe birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, and so forth. And you will find that as you go along, you may not even get to November before you finally get too tired of doing this and you want your mind to relax and let go. So start now with December 31st and pick out the holidays. Christmas. And Thanksgiving. October 24th is Matt and Rosie's birthday. Now relax as you go along. Now you'll notice already that she has skipped over many different holidays. She skipped over, obviously, New Year's Eve. She skipped over Christmas Eve. She's going back rather fast, but that's okay. That's the same thing as a person counting backwards from a hundred. You can count backwards from 100 by going 100, 93, 81, and finally not care any longer and let them all go. She is doing the same thing. She's skipping over, going back, picking out a birthday here and there, or a holiday. I want you to will away all of the birthdays, holidays, and anniversaries just for the next few moments, Donna. And if you see one other, or maybe two others, that seem to be prominent in your mind right now, say them, and when you get them out of the way, it's going to help you to relax even more. And if they're not there, that's okay. Jimmy's birthday, October 6th. Libby's birthday, September 24th. Now will them away. There's one more in there. Chris, September 1st. And is there one other? Richard, he made it May 6th. Would it be all right now to let them go? Are they all gone? That's perfect. Now with each breath that you take, with each sound that you hear, with every word that I say, you feel yourself relaxing more and more deeply. Down into your own private world. Nothing. Allow your mind now to drift back slowly. Slowly. It may skip five years, it may skip twenty years. Allow your mind to drift back over time to an event that you have not thought of since the day it happened. 
expect it to be there and it will be there as a matter of fact I'm going to snap my fingers when I snap my fingers you're going to be back there somewhere in an event that you thought that you had long forgotten it's there now where are you running running and laughing we're playing hide and go seek and it's nighttime and it's summer and it's warm and we get to stay out late and how old might you be maybe 10 and who's there a whole bunch of kids all in the neighborhood and we're trying to find a place to hide and there's probably two more girls besides me and we're running and the more I laugh the harder it is to run because we're scared and it's silly to be scared but we were scared that we we're going to be found and we were having so much fun do you remember what you're wearing a dress what color is that dress just a plain old dress. Just a plain old dress. Take a good look at your shoes. What are you wearing? Brown shoes. Brown shoes. Is there anything else that you see as you take a good look around you right now? Yeah, I see the houses and bushes and the bushes are high and we were trying to hide in the bushes and around people's backyards and and people didn't mind that we did that. They didn't mind that you did it? Hmm. That was a time when life was much easier. Hmm. And we kept laughing and laughing. In a moment, Donna, I'm going to bring you back to today, to here, to your present age. And you're going to be able to remember that event as if it happened just last week. And it will become part of you once again. Each and every time you do this, you're going to go down deeper and deeper and faster and faster. You're going to look forward to it, you're going to want it, and it will happen. And it will be so easy, because none of these events that you recall prior to the age of 15 were unpleasant events, because the ones you're going back to recall now, I'm only asking you to recall the pleasant ones, just as you have done so far. I want you to notice how good you feel. And this time I'm going to count you up. I'm going to start counting. And as I count up, you're going to become more and more alert and more and more aware of yourself, your body, your thoughts, and me in this room with each number that I count up. And it'll be your choosing as to which number you pick when you open your eyes. One, starting to reorient yourself now. Two, becoming more and more aware. Three, four, five, more alert still. You will not need to remember anything that I have said to you except the memory that you had. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, more and more alert, more and more alert, sixteen, 
17, 18, How do you feel? Really good. <laughs> <coughs> you know, that was so good because um, I was accepted, one of the gang, one of the group, whereas um, my memory of all those years was of like being an outsider. And I wasn't. And I bet you haven't thought of that in a long time. Mm -mm. No, because all I, all my memory is like being on the, the outside looking in. You may be wondering why I counted her up at the end. I just wanted to show you that there are different ways that you can bring people back to the point of where their eyes open. However, you will find that sometimes asking a person to come up of their own free will is a very successful way to do it, but you don't want to be able to rely upon that all the time. There are other people who have been hypnotized who fully expect that you're going to count them up. So you should know that you can do it either way. But always let them know that you're going to count up to any number of their choosing. Don't tell them that they're going to be fully alert, wide awake at the count of seven, because suppose they don't want to be. I hope when you rewind the video, that you put it on slow motion and you are able to see the movement that she made even though it was so imperceptible when I snapped my fingers. Were you aware of any I, I felt like I kind of dropped. Yeah, your head moved oh. probably a sixteenth of an inch but it was just enough to let me know that you had dropped right there into that event at that very second. I, I felt, I dropped. <laughs> I felt like my whole body went down. You can snap your fingers. You can tell a person that uh, they're at a certain point and you say to them, I'm gonna lift your arm and drop it. And when your arm drops back down, you're gonna be right there. And all you do is reach over and I'm gonna pick up your wrist. You reach over and you pick up their arm and you say, now when your arm drops back down, you're going to be right there. It's going to be something you haven't seen in a long time. Pop. It's there. You can cough. You can sneeze. Snap your fingers. It doesn't matter. You can do anything like this. Any kind of a sound or movement will take them there as long as they know what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. You know what's interesting is... Um when I am afraid now, or I'm faced with something that's fearsome, I laugh. I was laughing all through that. We were scared to death we were going to be found. And the more I laughed, the more afraid I was. And then, so I've been doing that a long time.